This is the pattern of fluid movement characteristic of waves on the surface of deep water. That is where the wavelength is comparable to or less than the depth. Shallow water waves are waves with wavelength long compared to the depth. This is the characteristic pattern of particle motion for shallow water waves. Notice that the horizontal amplitude of the particle motions is nearly the same at all depths. We say that such waves are essentially one-dimensional since the horizontal fluid motion depends only on time and horizontal distance from a reference point. Because they are simpler and yet display most of the important features of wave motion, we will use one-dimensional waves for further study. Not all waves are periodic. We can send a single step wave down the channel. And for our purposes, we may consider either a step wave that increases the depth or a step wave that decreases the depth. Note the movement of the fluid particles as a step wave passes. In the undisturbed water ahead of the wave, the fluid is at rest. After the wave has passed, the fluid is moving in the same direction as the wave at a constant speed. The passage of the wave accelerated the fluid. Watch one particle again. While the wave moves from here, to here, the particle moves through a much shorter distance. These particle images were recorded at equal time intervals. So from the spacing, it is clear that the wave is a region of acceleration. If we let the wave continue out of frame, we see that the particle is no longer accelerating, but moving at a constant speed. Fluid acceleration occurs only during the time the depth is changing. The depth in a given region can only increase if more fluid is moving into it than is moving out, a simple statement of the conservation of matter. And clearly the fluid velocity is higher here than here. Now here's a wave that decreases the depth. More fluid must be flowing out of a given length of the channel than flowing in for the depth to decrease. The particles ahead of the wave are at rest. Those behind it are moving at a constant speed. The decrease in depth is accompanied by an acceleration of the fluid. While the wave moved this far, the particle moved this distance, accelerating in the opposite direction, as our multiple exposure shows. And as the wave moves on out of the frame, we see the particle continuing to move with constant speed. What force causes the fluid to accelerate? It is a force arising from differences in pressure. Note how the pressure at the bottom of the channel increases as this wave goes by. For these shallow water waves, the vertical acceleration of the fluid is small compared to the gravitational acceleration. Thus, the vertical pressure variation is nearly hydrostatic. That is, the pressure is atmospheric at the surface and increases almost linearly with depth. The pressure difference in a horizontal direction is nearly the same at all depths, which means that the horizontal acceleration is nearly the same at all depths.
As this wave passes, the pressure on a fluid particle increases. For this reason, we may call this type of wave a compression wave. Note that the fluid acceleration is in the direction of wave motion. In this wave, the fluid acceleration is in a direction opposite to the wave motion. This is so because the pressure is higher at the leading edge of the wave than at the trailing edge. As this wave passes, the pressure on a fluid particle decreases. Hence, we may call this type of wave an expansion wave in contrast to the compression wave. In both cases, the vertical pressure gradient arises because of the gravitational force acting on the fluid. Thus, it is really gravity that causes these waves. Whenever the fluid surface is not horizontal, a horizontal pressure gradient is produced by gravity that accelerates the fluid horizontally. We have viewed the waves in a reference frame at rest with respect to the fluid ahead of the wave. Let us change our frame of reference and move with the advancing wave so that we can watch the shape of the wave. As it advances, the compression wave appears to steepen, the trailing edge overtaking the leading edge. The expansion wave, on the other hand, flattens out, the trailing edge falling behind the leading edge. Differences in local fluid velocity and depth within the wave itself alter its configuration as it advances. Where the depth is greater, that portion of the wave travels faster. We can see this variation in wave speed quite easily. Here is a depth of one inch, here is a depth of four inches, and here one of nine inches. Small amplitude waves pass this line at the same instant. Obviously, their velocities are different, the wave in the deepest water traveling fastest. In fact, their velocities are in a ratio of 1 to 2 to 3, directly proportional to the square root of the depth. The wave speed is given by the square root of gh, where h is the depth. This fact, that the wave speed relative to the fluid, the local wave speed, increases with depth, is one reason why an expansion wave tends to spread out as it moves. We can describe the velocity of the leading edge of the expansion wave relative to the fluid as square root of gh1. Similarly, we can describe the velocity of the trailing edge relative to the fluid as square root of gh2. Clearly, the local wave speed at the shallower trailing edge is less than the local wave speed at the deeper leading edge.